Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Golden Astrologer podcast. This is Deb McBride, and I am broadcasting or recording this from lovely Escazú, Costa Rica, where it is still a beautiful, breezy day, and the sun is going to set in 10 minutes. And it is Sunday, the 14th of July, Bastille Day in France, and we are in the year 2024. So there has been a lot of discussion online about tomorrow and the Mars Uranus aspect and many people talking about it. And before this, I had heard from a friend about somebody that on Rumble that was predicting something, they had a machine, I think I mentioned this last week, that predicted hot days for things to happen and like tomorrow, these days, yesterday, today, today, tomorrow, Tuesday, are days that are hot. And I got an email from another astrologer talking about remote viewers looking at this. So it's It's been a big hot topic and it's a hot aspect, but we have it every two years. And we had this last time, August 1st or so, 2022. Now, this is happening tomorrow, tomorrow, the 15th, at 10.05 a.m. Eastern Time. So this is, you know, tomorrow morning in this region of the world, in the Eastern Time Zone, Mars and Uranus are going to conjunct. Now, that doesn't mean that at that moment something is going to happen, because if you saw the news today, something already has. And I'm not going to get into it because I'm not a news broadcaster, but Mars and Uranus are usually volatile, inflammatory, could be rage-driven, but also could be brilliant genius innovation. It's different for everybody. It's different if you have a Mars Uranus in your chart. It's different if you don't have Mars Uranus, but you've got other things that could be at the point in Taurus where they are conjuncting, okay? Now, there are things that are cautionary with this aspect. And of course, last week you heard me talk about, please don't, you know, drive with rage. Please do not engage in road rage. Please do not scream at people. Keep your head. Please keep your head. Please keep your head. And these are all Mars, Uranus things that I talk about every time Mars and Uranus are in a stressful aspect to one another. And so there were things that happened today and they are at the height of the news. And I would think that this energy burst forth in that manner. Then then that doesn't mean that there aren't going to be other things. And then on Tuesday, the 16th, the moon, the moon's already in Scorpio and the moon will oppose the two planets that are still relatively in conjunction on Tuesday and it's going to trigger it again. So there's a lot of hot energy here, okay? And we all need to keep our heads and we all need to remember that there are things that we can't control and there are things that we get frustrated about and there are ways of using this energy that are not violent like we saw in the news today. And there are ways to use this energy that are creative and visionary and innovative. Now, Mars and Uranus, I mean, certainly if you have been getting irritated at your kids or your partner or your family or your work or your dog, then sure, you might be feeling this too. How did you use this energy? How are you using this energy? I'll give you an example from my life. I have been attending an online AI summit uh, given by Mind Valley, and it was free. And I have a Mind Valley membership, and I only joined about a month and a half ago. And I watched this this weekend, and it was all nerds and geeks. That's very Uranian. Um, and they called themselves, I'm not criticizing them, they called themselves mega nerds, okay? <laughs> And they were discussing all the uses and the incredible ways you can use AI. Now, I was particularly interested because my new vision system that we started building in 2009 is AI. And the programmers in the Netherlands who built this use AI regularly. And this was built back then. And so we are we are ahead of the curve in some ways, but then I saw people on this AI summit 
ca- kind of catching up to us a little bit with using this for their using AI for their health, their health with like Chat GPT and stuff. And you know, I don't know Chat GPT too much, but I'm learning. What, that's why I tuned in because I wanted to learn more. So it was an educational thing about innovation and technology, which is a very Mars Uranus thing and the practical uses of it, which is very Taurus. So that for me was really valuable. And Taurus also looks for value, right? So there are things that I learned that I didn't know and that I wrote down a whole bunch of notes and I wrote down websites and places I have to check out relative to this. And I was also contacting my colleague, Gwen Foster, about you know, the the whole concept that these people are trying to use this for their health when they could be using our system, which is very advanced and uh, predicts emotional stuff and, you know, um, health stuff. And certainly, you know, she's a, she's a naturopathic doctor, so we use it for these things all the time. And we have a bunch of practitioners who use this with us. But it is AI-driven. And So I got excited and, of course, frustrated at the same time. So this was my experience. I got excited. I got a little crazy, (laughs) like not crazy with anybody, crazy with me, like, oh, my God, they're doing this thing that they need to see new vision. Oh, my God. You know, that kind of thing. And so it was a bit of a frustrating energy, but also an advanced, like, we got to get moving. We got to get moving. People need to know more about this. So the right people need to know more about this, you know, and I was surprised and taken aback and all, all those good Mars Uranus things. So I was using it for a very innovative thing. Now I'm, I'm still, we're still in the, the, the heat of this aspect. So we'll see what comes in these next days. And hopefully I can talk to her about what I was watching because she couldn't tune into anything because she's in Houston and there's no power there. So, you know, I, I empathize with everybody who's been affected by that hurricane. Okay, so that's one thing. Mars and Uranus are inflammatory. They can be irritating. They can give you a bad mood and a bad temper when you don't know why. And maybe your friends, you get into a spat with somebody and you don't know why. Well, this is why. And maybe you don't want to have any of those, you know, staticky energies in your life. So I suggest you go meditate transform this energy transmute this energy that's what I was doing I was doing a lot of meditation and you know like I said we're not finished yet so we'll see what happens over these next couple days but hopefully I can maintain my composure that I've had these last days uh, with the exception of getting very excited about all this AI stuff so and AI is something very Mars Uranus like I said so it's it's very common to be involved in something technological. It was a perfect weekend for them to do all of this technical advanced stuff, you know, Uranus is the innovator, right? And I made a post on Instagram today talking about it as well. So if you are so inclined and you're on Instagram, you can check out my video about how I spoke on about innovation and how to use this energy, which, you know, I'm talking about here as well. And then that's, so that's like the big aspect of the week. That's one of the big aspects of the week. We've got other stuff going on. You know, that is going to linger for a few days. And like I said, Tuesday, the moon in Scorpio is going to trigger these things. And remember how the moon in Scorpio opposed that Jupiter Uranus and we got a dose of it all over again. So, you know, after 10.05 10.05 a.m. Eastern Time tomorrow. Don't go, whew, glad we, we, we got rid of that energy. Now we can move on to other things because this is going to like stay with us. It, this It's not that precise. As I've mentioned here before, my teacher used to call this the fallacy of the partial aspect, meaning the exactitude. Things happen before, things happen after. And we're going to see what happens when the moon triggers all of this. Hopefully, it can be useful and, you know, maybe I'll start, you know, Scorpio is a very business oriented sign. Maybe I'll start using this education I just gained from, you know, this, this summit and I can start using it in my business, which is going to increase things or something like that. So good, good stuff. The other thing is that the sun is going to sextile this Uranus and it's going to be talking with Uranus, and, and that is a smooth flowing aspect where the sun 
shines its enlightenment upon this aspect as um, we approach Thursday the 18th, and this will be 10 a.m. Eastern Time, Thursday the 18th. So Uranus isn't finished. It's getting some excitement from the sun, and the sun is always, you know, zapping us with a lot of energy, right? And so this is, this is what's happening. And so the other thing is that Mars, once it's finished with Uranus, is going to mosey on out of the end of Taurus in the next few days. And by Saturday the 20th is going into Gemini. And it's going to start getting ready to meet up with Jupiter in a few weeks. But this is where Mars is going. So Mars is going to say, hey to Uranus. The moon is going to say, hey to Mars and Uranus. The sun is going to say hello to Uranus, and then we're going to move on into some other stuff when Mars then changes signs on Saturday the 20th. And this is important because Mars, the last time Mars went into Gemini two years ago, Mars was retrograde. Remember Mars went retrograde in Gemini at the end of 2022? And it was squaring Neptune, and it was back and forth with Neptune, and then and that was hard stuff. So now it's going to smoothly go through Gemini. It's going to start that 4.43 p.m. Eastern Time on Saturday the 20th, and it's just moving along into Gemini. It's not going to retrograde this time. We will see the retrograde in the sign of Leo. More on that in the coming months. I already talked about it a few weeks ago. But the thing I really do want to discuss, and there's, there's other aspects I'm going to get to, but there is something very important, and that's next Sunday. Now, we are going to meet again next Sunday, but by the time I do my podcast on Sunday, this aspect will be over, and it is the full moon. So you will see the full moon probably Saturday night, and the full moon is at 6.17 a.m. Eastern Time on Sunday the 21st. So this is going to be way before my podcast because it'll be 4.17 a.m. By my, by my hour. And I won't be doing my podcast at 4.17 a.m. I can assure you of that. So. <laughs> um, so it's the sun in Cancer because the sun's still in Cancer. And then the moon will oppose it, creating the full moon in Capricorn. So this is the second full moon in Capricorn. And if you remember, just about three weeks ago, we had the full moon in Capricorn at the very beginning of the sign of Cancer. So the sun was in the very early, remember it went into Cancer, and then it was a full moon like the next day. And now we are having the second full moon in the sign of Capricorn. And this is a very, very powerful reminder of so many things. But first of all, it doesn't work this way. We don't have two full moons in the same sign. This is a very rare, rare aspect. All right. And it is a very powerful reminder that we are nearing the end of the Capricorn experience with Pluto. Now, Pluto, as we speak, is in Aquarius and shall be until early September when it goes back into Capricorn. But this full moon is at 29 degrees Capricorn, nine minutes. And this is at the very end of Capricorn. And we are going to be reminded of this transition that we are in, which is extremely powerful as we approach the end of Pluto visiting there. Pluto's going to go to 29 Capricorn early September till about the 19th of November. And by the 20th of November, Pluto will be back in Aquarius again. Pluto will make its station direct sometime in October and then pass through that 29 degrees. It's only going to be at 29 degrees, only. And this is going to be a very powerful, potent time because it's the very end, the juice of Capricorn, the very, very bottom of the barrel of the juice of all the deep essence. When you boil something down to its essence, you get that energy at 29 degrees, something very strong. So I expect some very intense things September through that mid-November time. And we are going to get a flavor of that next Sunday. And I may have things to say about it once it's happened. And I may have my own personal experiences and you'll have your personal experiences. But I want you to pay 
close, close, powerful attention to this because, and if you saw me right now at my, my desk sitting up straight, waving my hands in the air, close, powerful attention to this because it's going to give you some highlights of what you can expect when Pluto makes that last transit just at 29 Capricorn. So this is so, so revealing and so incredibly important. And we want to understand this journey we've been on for the last 16 years since 2008 and how Pluto entered Capricorn and then these moments of Pluto touching this last degree and saying goodbye for the next 248 years. This moon, just you're saying, but Deb, it's not Pluto, it's the full moon. Yeah, but guess what? <laughs> That's a point. That is what we call a famous point, okay? That is a famous point. So we're going to get some energies from that. And then, so that happens 6, 17 a.m., like I said, in the Eastern time zone. And wherever you are in the world, it'll probably happen later on Sunday, maybe early Monday morning. But it is... An incredible moment because the moon is going to leave Capricorn and enter Aquarius at 7.43 a.m. So about an hour and a half later, the moon goes into Aquarius. It doesn't even really go void for very long because it's void for 20 minutes because it's going to sextile Neptune. And that's the last aspect because remember, Neptune's at the end of its sign too. So we're having all these endings at the same time. So it's phenomenal that the moon is going to hit this point that Pluto is going to transition from. And then it's going to talk to Neptune, which is also going to be in a transition next year. Now, this is all happening very early Sunday morning or in the wee hours, you know, like for me. And maybe if you're in Europe, you're going to get to feel this a little better or, you know, Australia, South Africa, you'll feel this because you'll be in your day and you'll be able to recognize it and pinpoint it. So if you, that's where you are, pay close attention. The rest of us are going to be asleep. <laughs> Many of us are going to be asleep and we're not going to be able to really, unless we have some rough dreams and some things we wake up with or the night before, or the morning of, but moon's going to enter Aquarius an hour and a half later and then conjunct Pluto another hour and a half or so later, hour and 45 minutes. So, we're, get, we're feeling that major transition, that transition on Sunday the 21st. This is a very powerful, powerful moment, and it's a powerful day. So I want you to pay attention to that full moon because it's going to make the transition that we are going to make ourselves with Pluto. Go from the end of Capricorn to Aquarius and it's going to bring us some information, some highlights. Write it down and write to me. Talk to me. Say, hey, Deb, guess what happened for me? You can write to me at info with golden astrologer com or deb at debmcbride.com. And, or, you know, find me on Instagram, the golden astrologer. You can write to me there. You can message me there and say, hey, Deb, that, that full moon, you were right. Then the, the sun. Okay, so the sun, that this is the 21st of, of July. What does that tell us? The sun is going to change signs. The sun is going to change signs and go into Leo at 3.44 a.m. on Monday the 22nd, which means the sun, obviously, because it's opposed by the moon at the very end of Capricorn, the sun is at the very end of Cancer, which is another thing at 29 degrees. Neptune's at 29 degrees. The moon is going to be full at 29 degrees. The sun is at 29 degrees. This is about endings. So next Sunday, if you f are feeling endings and incredible release and letting go, follow it, go deep with it, let it pass through you, work with it. I say these things all the time, right? Um, it's important. It's important for you to watch this because this is a very powerful, potent energy that we're experiencing. The sun is going to try Neptune. It's going to make a nice conversation with Neptune later that day, 11.25 p.m. in the Eastern time zone. And that is a very good day for prayer and meditation and speaking to the cosmos and speaking to the powers that you feel support you in this life, the universe, 
source, Mother Nature. And when you connect with this, you're going to hopefully get some intuitions and some insights, which is going to be fascinating. This is a fascinating moment. Please watch it. I can feel it. It's going to be deep. Okay. And if, you know, and this, of course, is going to be people who go out to play golf that day and they're not even paying attention to this. And they're like, had a really good golf day, you know? Okay, good. (laughs) Everybody's going to process this differently depending on what they're doing and what their chart looks like. Now that's the other thing. If you are a person who has a lot of things at 29 degrees in your chart, well then, hey, you are going to feel this. You are going to feel this. It's going to ring chimes, bells, whistles, everything. Are the, the bells and whistles are going to go off. Everything is going to go off, the alarms, because it's an ending. Because if you were born with things at 29 degrees, then that means within the first year of your life, depending on the planet, it progressed to, if it's like your son was at 29 degrees of a sign, it progressed to a new sign in the first year of your life. So anybody with planets at like 29 and zero, they're going to feel this the strongest. Okay. And if you have a progression, how do you know these things? What's a progression? Come see me and I can talk to you all about this stuff. And if it's going to really flip the switch in your chart, and if it's going to flip the switch in your chart, you, you want to have some counsel. You want to have a reading. You want to get connected to whatever is, um, you know, su- surfacing for you. Now, an interesting thing. I was listening to this mentor. I, I listened to Melanie Ann Layer, and um, that's where I won the notebook, right, last week. And um, she was saying something she was saying that when you're going through something really difficult in your life, she said, when she goes through those things, and she's gone through some really awful stuff that she's talked to us about, when, when you go through those things, you got to say to the universe, well, you must have something really big planned for me. If you're putting me through this, you must have something really big planned for me on the other side of this because when we go through these big transitions when things are at 29 degrees and Pluto is changing signs and Neptune's following it when we go through these big transitions we are letting go of something we're releasing something we are being guided to the next chapter of our lives but this is a very complicated ending of sorts of many things and so we've got to put our trust and faith in the universe that this is This is for our higher good and that what's on the other side of this is incredible. And she's right because if we don't go through this, energetically speaking, we can't hold and contain what comes next for us. We can't hold and contain the big jump that we're going to make, the leap that we've been working towards. Maybe you're trying to like start a family Maybe you're trying to start a new business. Maybe you're taking your business to the next level. This is the next level of life. It's not just like, oh, yeah, okay, it's a transition. Yeah, you know, this is huge. And we're being given a lot of information about this next Sunday. So, so much, so much is huge in this. And so much transformation is happening. And if you don't get some sort of, mindfulness practice, meditation practice, grounded practice, exercise practice, do something for yourself and body and mind, then, you know, the universe is going to toss you to and fro while you're going through this, while we're moving to this transition. And I was listening to Vishen Lakiani the other day, and he was saying that he calls this the beautiful destruction, which I thought was an incredible incredible label for this. What a great name. He says, you know, you're going through something incredible only to come out the other side and go to the next level of your life. And like Melanie was saying, if you are going through something really that is deep and intense, yeah, you're going to experience something really incredible on the other side of this, right? Doesn't that always happen? something really big and beautiful, the beautiful destruction. So this beautiful destruction will affect your life and then we rebuild it and we get to the other side and we're like, oh, that's what I was being prepared for. 
because I couldn't hold the energy unless I like rode this wave of beautiful destruction and rode this wave of intensity and what felt like things were falling apart. This is what I'm being prepared for. And now I can open my wings and fly to the next thing. So this is incredible. So pay attention to this and seek counsel come to me you can come to me you know you can come to me um you can go to someone that you trust you know whoever counsels you or guides you or brings you to a good place and allow yourself to be part of this you know thriving through this transition because we can all thrive no one's having an amazing time right now. Like there are people that are achieving their goals, but there's something else going on. They're climbing up this mountain right alongside of us. You know, they, they may be achieving incredible goals right now and phenomenal heights, but there's other stuff going on for people that is profound and powerful and deep and moving and energetically significant. So I want you to pay very close attention to what happens over these next days. How are you feeling during the, during this Mars Uranus aligning with the fixed star Algol, which is, you know, recklessness and then moving into this powerful full moon that we're going to have. That's going to bring us to this end of Capricorn like Pluto will. So things at 29 degrees are bringing us to the very essence of the lessons and the miracles and the chapters and the next place we're going to. So my sermon for Sunday. Um, you know, we're going to get some really strong aspects from this this week. And so we just need to kind of stay grounded and allow ourselves to move through this with ease, grace, and flow. And so Mars is going to tr- sextile Neptune on Saturday the 20th, before the sun trines it on Sunday the 21st. And then Mars is going to, once it goes into Gemini, it's going to start talking to Pluto, trining Pluto on Sunday the 21st. So the 21st has really got a lot of hot energy, got a lot of hot energy. And tomorrow is hot energy. So we've got sort of um, brackets of hot energy, Monday, Tuesday, and then Saturday, Sunday. So... Uh, the middle of the week is a little more Wednesday, Thursday, Friday is a little more flowy, okay, as we move through this. And this is the last week of Cancerian season. And we're closing the door on the, the season of the crab, which feels like it just started, of course. And as we move through this, we're going to move into more fiery, feisty energy when things start moving into Leo, as they already have started moving into Leo. And when the sun goes into Leo, the sun belongs in Leo. The sun loves Leo. So this is going to be good for us. This is going to be very good for us. Other things happening, Venus in Leo is going to speak sweetly to Jupiter on that Sunday, the 21st, in a sextile. Very, very nice. That's going to give us some support that day. Mercury is going to square Uranus that day. Sunday's hot. Next Sunday's hot. Mercury's going to square Uranus, and that's going to be powerfully brilliant and innovative again. So we've got another sort of innovative thing happening. And then we've also got uh, Mercury trining Chiron on Thursday the 18th, which is good. It would help us maybe understand some of our wounds, connect with some of the things that are coming up for us during this time, some things that may need to get worked out, get healed, as is the sun is squaring Chiron tomorrow. So Chiron's getting activated. Mercury's getting activated. There's a lot of action this week. Venus is kind of quiet. She was more front and center this past week, like I told you last week. But she's going to make that nice sextile to Jupiter on the 21st. And that's going to help, I think, smooth things over. Once the sun goes into Leo on the 22nd, it's going to oppose Pluto on the 23rd. So this is going to be the first time that the sun in Leo is going to oppose Pluto in Aquarius, the first of many of these to come. So be watchful. We've got a lot to look out for. And I want you to know I'm here for you. So you can schedule an astrology session with me. 
You can schedule some Reiki with me, which is lovely for smoothing over and being soothing for you and sort of clearing out and cleaning out all that dusty energy that we collect along the way while we, we pass through these aspects and we pass through these dark moments and light moments and light and dark moments of the full moon <laughs> and the new moon and all the lunations. And then, you know, there's expansion mentoring that you can work with me on. And that could be something really valuable for the next three, six or 12 months with me because then I can work with you during these Pluto transitions. And maybe you really want that. So let's talk. If you're interested, contact me. As I mentioned before, deb at debmcbride.com, info at thegoldenastrologer.com, or you can go to my website, thegoldenastrologer.com, and click book online, and you can work with me. That way you can pick out what you'd like, and we can, we can work together. I am also available for New Vision sessions if you are interested and you want to know more about it. You can look at our website, New Vision USA, that's N-U-VisionUSA.com, and look at our websites, look at some demos. The demos are up on the website now. You can see what it's all about. And I can uh, bring you through a New Vision session. We can do all sorts of clearings and manifestations and all the things that we, we like to do with emotional healing work in there. Thank you for listening. I bless you and send you divine white light during this week ahead. Be patient with yourself and others. Be patient with life and stay close to yourself. Work through this energy. Find your peace. Find your empathy and your compassion and get through this. Okay. And watch out next Sunday for information coming your way about what the transition for you is about. And let's see what happens. And I look forward to meeting with you again and hearing from you. And I thank you for listening and much gratitude to all. Have a beautiful week.